What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a series overview for the Nerf Zombie Strike series, updated for 2021. In this video, I will briefly summarize every Nerf Zombie Strike blaster on the market. I will show you them firing and then give you my top picks. So if you want to get a look into the Zombie Strike series and into every blaster within this series, sit back and tune in. Starting out with what is the Zombie Strike line? It's a whole series made by Nerf, mostly dart blasters, but also arrow launchers and vortex disc launchers. The dart blasters in this series tend to include the green Nerf Elite darts. These are the same as Nerf Elite darts, but they're green to indicate it's a zombie Zombie Strike Dart. The design theme behind the Zombie Strike Blasters is an end of the world theme. So the world has ended, the economy has collapsed, zombies are taking over, and you need to defend yourself against the zombies. So they have cloth wraps and really cool design elements within the shells of these blasters. Most of them tend to be pretty gimmicky. They do have some functional ones in the series, but it's not based around function or tactics. It's usually the emotional response and doing something silly and fun. That's a general summary of the Nerf Zombie Strike series. Now I'll go one by one, summarizing each of the blasters. This is the Hammer Shot. This blaster's spring-powered hammer action with a five round rotating cylinder. It's a nice sidearm that a lot of people choose to use with one hand, which is the benefit of hammer action. One-handed operation is great, so you can hold a flag and still shoot. You can dual wield, shoot two at once. You can do pretty much anything you want with your left hand as you're firing with one hand. Five round capacity, 65 FPS chrono velocity. This is the hammer shot. Next up is the sledge fire. The sledge fire is a spring powered shell operated three round shotgun. It's a break action blaster, so that action has primed the blaster. Then you can insert your three dart shell into the chamber and then fire off three darts with one trigger pull. It's a shotgun with a very cool emotional response to use this one. It's just really fun to use. But it's worth noting it does not operate without the shells, so if you lose them, you're kind of out of luck. The sledge fire is common amongst shotgun users because it's very fun to use, and it's one of the few shotguns that Nerf sells. That is the sledge fire. Next up is the crossfire bow. I do not actually own one of these because these stupid bow arms have snapped. I've owned two, and I broke both of them. It's a very difficult blaster to store. But it's spring-powered with a 64 FPS chrono with limited capacity. This is not a very bad effective blaster. And in my opinion, after about 15 minutes of use, it gets pretty boring pretty fast. That is the crossfire bow. Next up is the double strike. The double strike is a spring-powered hammer action two-shot smart AR system blaster. You front load your two darts, you can prime this blaster with one hand just like the hammer shot, and it fires off two in a row without reloading using the smart AR. This blaster is very thin, easy to tuck away into a cargo pocket or a pouch, making it a pretty good emergency backup pistol. I think it looks pretty cool, it holds well in the hand, and you can use it with one hand, which is cool. And it has a 59 FPS chrono average which is pretty slow for a primary, but for a backup emergency pistol is pretty normal. That is the double strike. Next up is the side strike. This blaster is a spring-powered, front-loading, single-shot blaster. The blaster itself is pretty basic, but it has a cool plastic holster, which is custom fit for the blaster. The holster can snap over your waistband, which holds the pistol in place pretty well for a quick draw. 71 FPS chrono average, which is pretty good for a sidearm. That is the side strike. Next up is the sling fire. This blaster is spring-powered, magazine-fed, and... Lever action, which is pretty cool. Lever action might not be the fastest priming mechanism compared to pump action with slam fire, but it's definitely really fun. It's magazine fed and it's compatible with other in-strike mags, so if the included six round magazine isn't enough, you can change out to something else with a 71 FPS chrono average. Sling fire might not be the most battle effective, but if you're a plinker or a target shooter, it's definitely really fun to use this one. But before buying it, check out the successor, the Scravenger, also included in this video. That is the sling fire. Next up is the Z Squad Clear Shot. I do not have one of these in the studio. The Clear Shot is a spring powered, single shot front loading pistol, which is very simple. Most people purchase these for the really cool optic. They don't really care about the blaster itself. It's not that it's a bad blaster, but it's pretty basic, but the scope is worth buying because it's pretty cool looking. That is the clear shot. Next up is the Zombie Strike Long Shot. The Long Shot is a spring-powered magazine-fed blaster. This is the same as the previous Long Shot, but they repainted it and they took off the bipod. But it is a reskin of the original Long Shot with a bigger spring so it shoots closer to the elite average. This one's good for modders because it has a very large plunger tube. If you're a factory nerfer, though, this doesn't really make sense compared to a pump action springer. That is the Zombie Strike Long Shot. Next up is the Flip Fury. The Flip Fury is a spring-powered pistol with a really cool rotating cylinder system. So this blaster feeds from the top cylinder, which holds six darts, but when you run empty, you pull on this lever and switch out to the other one. Total loaded capacity of 12 darts with a chrono velocity of 73 feet per second. A pretty fun pistol for maybe pistol wars or as a miniature primary, but as a secondary, it's obviously way too big to holster. Still a very fun blaster to use because of the flipping action. That is the Flip Fury. Next up is the Duminator. The Duminator is a spring-powered pump action blaster with a very cool loading system. It's kind of like an upscaled Flip Fury with similar technology. Each cylinder holds six darts. There are four cylinders, and when you're empty on that cylinder, you pull on the lever and switch to the next one. Muzzle velocity of 65 FPS with a pretty cool design here. With newer blasters like the Adventure Force Villainator, this one is no longer really relevant. You can have a similar capacity without having to flip through different cylinders. But it's a fun blaster to play with if you like 
flipping around. That is the Dominator. Next up is the Silent Strike. This is a very unusual blaster because it's not really a blaster, it's just a pipe. This blaster is propelled by air from your lungs. How it works, you push a dart in and then <gasps> blow out. The performance and firing velocity totally depend on your blowing ability. I happen to get an average velocity of 69 giggity feet per second, which given the nature of this blaster, you couldn't make that up. <laughs> Instead of buying this, you can go to Home Depot and just get a little piece of PVC and it's gonna work better and be a lot cheaper. And for most people with reasonable lung capacity, if you extend the length of your pipe, you can actually get a higher muzzle velocity and much better range. This is actually a little too small to be an effective blowpipe, but it looks pretty cool and it's got sling mounts for whatever reason, so, you know. There's that. That is the Silent Strike. Next up is the Brain Saw. The Brain Saw is a spring-powered pump-action eight-shot smart AR system with a cool rotating foam wheel up here. You pull on this handle, and it spins the foam blade around like a chainsaw. Total gimmick with very low muzzle velocity at only 56 feet per second. And keep in mind, bros, there's so much plastic up here, this is not safe to actually strike someone with. So it's fun to spin it around to make it look intimidating, but it's not safe to actually use as a melee product. But it looks pretty cool, like a chainsaw. That is the brain saw. Next up is the cross cut, which is similar to the brain saw because it has a spinning little wheel. This is a spring-powered two-shot smart AR system that's a simple front loader. But when you pull on this bottom lever, you spin the foam wheel, which is pretty cool looking. Again, there's so much plastic, you can't really use this as a proper melee toy, or you might hit somebody with the plastic and hurt them. But with a muzzle velocity of 70 FPS, the performance is actually decent. That is the crosscut. Next up is the clamp down. This is pretty much just a Jolt reskin. This is a spring-powered single-shot pull to prime blaster, similar to a Jolt. Muzzle velocity of 53 feet per second, similar to a Jolt. It's a Jolt reskin with a big old piece of plastic up front. That is the clamp down. Next up is the Dread Bolt. This thing shoots gigantic arrows. This unit is band powered. It has a stretchy cord, which is actually propelling the nerf dart. To prime, you pull down on the handle like that. Then you insert your one arrow, you pull the trigger, and you get to fire one arrow per shot. Muzzle velocity of 55 feet per second, but it's an arrow launcher, not a dart launcher, so that's not too slow. It's a very big, fun to use blaster that's all about the emotional response, not about the battle effectiveness. That is the Dread Bolt. Next up is another one I don't have in the studio, the Outbreaker Bow. And I don't have it because I broke it, because of these stupid little fake bow arms. But it's a very simple, low capacity spring powered blaster with a chrono velocity of 63 feet per second. Nothing to write home about, not really worth buying, that's why I don't have one. That is the Outbreaker bow. Next up is the Rev Reaper. This blaster is flywheel powered, but it does not use batteries. It is a manually, mechanically powered flywheel system, which is very cool. It's magazine fed with standard in strike mags. This is actually not the included magazine, I lost it. This is just a placeholder, but it goes into the top, which is very unusual. And when you crank back on the handle, you rev up the flywheels and inject a dart into the flywheel wheels. It's all done with the pumping motion. The muzzle velocity depends on how hard you crank it and how good you are at pumping, but it varies between 51 and 88 feet per second, so a very large range of muzzle velocity. When in doubt, pump really hard. <laughs> very cool blaster for those that want a flywheeler after you get EMP'd and your battery guns don't work anymore. That is the Rev Reaper. Next up is the Rip Chain. The Rip Chain is a spring-powered pump-action chain-fed blaster. 67 FPS muzzle velocity, but I had a number of feeding issues and I don't recommend anyone purchase this one. The mechanics of the rotation system do not work consistently, but it's a pretty cool looking blaster and it's off the chain, bro. <laughs> that is the rip chain. Next up is the Wrath Bolt. This blaster is band powered and very similar to the Dread Bolt, but it's way, way smaller. And the muzzle velocity of this is actually better. So if you need to competitively fling arrows, this is a good one to pick. You manually pull back on the elastic cord like that, you eject your arrow and then you can shoot one at a time. Very fun blaster to use. It's a unique experience to launch arrows across the room instead of little tiny nerf darts. That is the Wrath Bolt. Next up is the Scravenger. The Scravenger is a spring powered magazine magazine-fed blaster that is lever action. It is very similar to the Sling Fire, which I've covered in this video. Some consider it to be the successor of the Sling Fire. It has the same basic function of the Sling Fire, being a spring-powered lever action magazine-fed blaster, but this one has way more tactics than the Sling Fire, which has barely any at all. Removable in-strike stock, two tactical rails, and an in-strike barrel lug up front. In a very cool addition, a selector switch turning from single fire to slam fire mode, which makes the blaster fire right when the lever returns to the original position instead of pulling the trigger. The slam fire lets you shoot a little bit faster at the expensive accuracy. This blaster also comes with some pretty cool attachments. It's pretty much the upgraded, very tactical sling fire. And if you're into lever action, it's one to consider. That is the Scravenger. Next up is the Nail Biter. The Nail Biter is a spring-powered semi-automatic clip-fed blaster. This is a very interesting blaster because when you pull the trigger, you're both priming back the spring and firing it, making it semi-automatic springer. No batteries required, which is very unusual. Granted, the muzzle velocity is very slow at only 46 FPS, but if they made it shoot any harder, you wouldn't be able to manage pulling back the spring. And after you 
fire a few clips of this, it gets kind of tiring on the hand. Eight shot capacity, low muzzle velocity, but very cool looks. And they even added an in-strike nozzle and a stock attachment point. Thanks for the tactics, Hasbro. That is the nail biter. Next up is the PowerShock Revoltinator. This is a battery powered, flywheel operated, semi-automatic magazine fed blaster. It operates similar to the Strife, but this unit has some built-in lights and sound effects, which makes it a little more fun and cool than the Strife. Not quite as tactical, but it has a very cool zombie slaying theme. With a muzzle velocity of 71 feet per second, it behaves like other Nerf blasters on the market right now. That is the Revoltinator. Next up is the Quadrot. The Quadrot is a very simple spring powered blaster with a four shot smart AR system. A simple T style priming handle and a very slim profile. 61 FPS chrono average, which isn't great for a primary, but perfectly appropriate for a sidearm. This is a great choice for a sidearm because it's so slim with a relatively high capacity of four darts. High capacity given its width and profile on your hip compared to the strong arm or hammer shot, which are much wider. That is the Quadrot. Next up is the Contractor. This blaster's spring powered pump action with an eight shot built in cylinder. And this one's got some snazzy sound effects and light effects. 62 FPS muzzle velocity, which is below average for the primary, but this one's obviously going for the emotional appeal, not for battle effectiveness. That is the Contractor. Next up is the Alternator. The Alternator is a spring powered pistol with a pretty cool loading system. So it has three barrels available, a single, a double, and a triple. You manually choose which barrel system you want to fire from. So you can fire single fire at a slightly higher muzzle velocity and switch to the triple if you want a shotgun blast at someone. Chrono velocity of 65 feet per second, 57 feet per second, and 41 feet per second. It's the same amount of spring power going into multiple darts, so obviously the chrono velocity will vary based on which barrel you choose to use. A very cool gimmicky toy that works as advertised. Its battle effectiveness is questionable, but that is the alternator. Next up is the Ghoul Grinder. This blaster's spring powered, primed with a side bolt like that, and fires from a really strange barrel system. It doesn't rotate this way, it rotates front to back like a saw. It has a 10 round capacity with a low muzzle velocity of 62 feet per second, but it has an in-strike tack rail, a muzzle attachment point, and a stock attachment point. A very interesting barrel design. It's not really that battle effective, but it's pretty cool that they pulled this off. Will I ever use it? No, but it's cool to know that it exists. That is the Ghoul Grinder. That is a brief summary of every Nerf Zombie Strike Blaster that's on the market right now. Now I will show you each of them firing.
concludes the firing demo for the Zombie Strike series. Now I'll go over my top picks within the Zombie Strike series. Each of these blasters has some fun element incorporated. This is just my subjective opinion of which ones are worth paying attention to. And my top picks for this one are in no particular order. First top pick, the hammer shot. The hammer shot has been a go-to sidearm for many years. It has a reasonable capacity, a very cool appearance, and you can use it with one hand, which is a big deal. You can go a little faster if you want to use it with two hands, but being able to have your offhand free completely to do whatever is very useful. And it's just fun to use the hammer action system. It's just a fun blaster to use. So that is my first top pick, the hammer shot. My next top pick is the sledge fire. Now I personally would not use the sledge fire in a nerf war, in a competitive nerf game, but it's super fun to use. And anyone who has used a sledge fire can attest to that. It's just a fun blaster to use. The break action system is interesting, the shells are fun, and it's a three-shot shotgun. Shotguns are not that common in our hobby. It's pretty fun to be able to launch multiple darts at the same time. Obviously a shotgun is going to feature a much lower muzzle velocity, so you're going to have to arc those darts in there. But it's a specialty blaster and it gives you a really special emotional response to using a blaster like this. But keep in mind, if you're looking for a battle effective shotgun, this might not be it. Consider the Elite Shell Strike. It's a smaller three-round shotgun with similar muzzle velocity that's just a little bit more battle effective. It's for those reasons that the Sledge Fire makes my top picks. My next top pick, the Double Strike. The Double Strike is a great alternative to the Jolt or another single shot emergency backup pistol. It's not that much bigger than a Jolt and it has twice the capacity. And unlike the Jolt, you can shoot this one with one hand. And if you're desperate enough in the game to reach for your backup emergency pistol, your other hand might be busy doing something else. So it's nice to be able to whip this out of a cargo pocket or a pretty small pouch to be able to whip off two shots with one hand. It's for these reasons the Double Strike lands on my top picks list. Next top pick, the Scravenger. I like the Scravenger because it's simply fun to use. It's unusual usual. It comes with a lot of really cool attachments. It's got the tactical front and the tactical rear points, so you can customize it, switch it out to something else. Lever action slam fire. I love this slam fire switch. What a cool innovation over the original sling fire. This is a fun one to plank with, to target shoot, to derp around with. I'm not sure it's a very battle effective blaster, but it's still fun to shoot. And it's for these reasons that the scavenger makes my top picks list. My last official top pick is the quadrot. The quadrot is a phenomenal sidearm. It's very small and efficiently built. Muzzle velocity isn't great, but you could always mod it and throw in a strong stronger spring if you're hardcore. It's rare to have a four round capacity with such a slim profile. Now, obviously if it's your primary, you're gonna want a higher capacity and a higher muzzle velocity than the quadrot. But if you're playing an extended game and you just need a sidearm in your holster, that's not gonna be too much weight. It's not gonna smack into your leg too much. This is a great option. After all, your pistol or your sidearm is typically only used to fight back to your rifle or your primary. And for that traditional role of a sidearm, this one does a great job. It's for these reasons that the quadrot makes my top picks list. Now that is my top picks list, but I do have one honorable mention that almost made it but not quite the Wrathbolt. The Wrathbolt is an honorable mention because it's a very effective arrow launcher that's really fun to use. However, it's a highly specialized blaster. If your game types do not specifically overvalue arrows, there's really no reason to use a blaster like this. But the Wrathbolt actually outperforms its bigger brother, the Dreadbolt. So it's way smaller and actually shoots at a higher muzzle velocity. So if you need to shoot arrows, this is a really good option. And that's it for the honorable mentions list. It's just the Wrathbolt. Woo! Long video. That concludes the series overview for the Zombie Strike series. This is a 2021 updated version. If you're watching this video beyond 2021, keep in mind I might not have everything listed here. So now hopefully you have a good understanding of the Zombie Strike Blasters. Hopefully seeing them one after another really helps you understand what this series is all about and what the theme is. If you'd like to see me break down any other series, leave a comment in the section below and maybe I'll get to that in the future. But that's the 2021 Zombie Strike Series Overview. Thanks so much for watching bros and as always, stay tactical.